Hi, I'm Lindsay Northen from Behind the Emerald Curtain. Today, you're invited to come backstage and learn a little bit about the makeup design of Wicked. See what it takes to bring an entire cast of imaginary characters to life. Makeup is the area that really is the most personal to an actor. Makeup, then hair, then their body. So what they see all the time is their own face in the mirror. So the relationship between the actor and Joe DeLude, the makeup, designer is truly one of trust. I think when you initially start working with an actor, I go about by asking them, okay, what, what do you see for this character? And then I can work with what they think, but also what I know I need to do for the makeup as well. Sometimes they are just made more beautiful than they are. Sometimes they're made into somebody who is not that not the person you think you want to see when you look in the mirror. I think that when you look at the uh, makeup of Wicked, there are moments of extreme, but mostly you're looking at natural, beautiful, um, young people in shiz to some of the, the more extreme makeup of um, the animals. The animals were a little tough in the beginning because we really weren't sure what direction we wanted to go in. We didn't want to go make it a literal animal, but it would be different than what everybody else looks like. There is makeup that defines character all through the show. The mob, which is the ensemble in the opening, um, they actually come back again in Act 2 in a much more menacing capacity. You know, we kind of make them look kind of scary and like they've been up all night so they get dark circles or like bruised cheeks and then they take, you know, the girls take off their lipstick so they look pale. Same pitchfork wielding mob in Witch Hunters are all the same people that are creating Emerald City. They transform themselves with costumes, with wigs, with hats. They change their makeup. They are transformed into these high class uh, couture denizens of the Emerald City. Becoming Elphaba is about transforming. The present makeup for Alphaba is, um, is a product from MAC called uh, Chroma Cake. It's almost like a watercolor, so you just add a little bit of water to it and we use these wide Japanese brushes and we, we paint it on. And then sculpting the face, finding how, how to, to develop a color palette that defines the eyes, the cheekbones, the mouth. We use, you know, some normal colors, like a beige and brown, black, but then we also use purple for the contour because the purple and the green contrast really nicely. And the whole point was to make it look like skin, not look like makeup. To watch Joe Delu do it for the first time is pretty exciting. Through the course of the show, there's constant touch-ups of the makeup, but also because she is changing as a character. She accelerates into being the, the Wicked Witch of the West of Act Two. We sort of do what we call our glam alphabet makeup. It gets darker, it gets more dramatic. We, you know, wing out the eyes so that, you know, it's, it comes out to here and she, you know, elongate her eyebrows and contour her a little bit more. She gets a darker lipstick. Makeup wise, you can see a change from her character from simple, you know, basic, not wearing any makeup per se, and then going into something that is much more dramatic and like she's come into her own now. A lot of times when I get makeup students who will email me and ask me questions, it makes me realize how amazing the show was and how groundbreaking it was in so many ways. It was a wonderful experience just to be able to create a whole world. Yeah.